Hey everyone and welcome back. So in this video we're going to start off fleshing out our VR project. Just wanted to take a quick aside and show you what we're going to be aiming towards. So by the end of this playlist we should have something which is pretty functional. I've got a really simple level and I've got a few different implementations for trying to make this quite universal so that we've got uh, controls for mobile and desktop VR uh, such as the Oculus. So for mobile for instance where you might not always have access to a controller I've got some look based interaction so we can look at different objects and interact with them. Uh, we can also teleport to specific points in a level using these pads and for some reason my PC has gone really laggy. Um, and I've also added in as well uh, not just instant teleportation because that can be a bit jarring so we're going to move on and add something if I can find it where we've got a couple of different options for the teleportation. So we're going to have some other trace based teleporting going on. So we've got one as well where we can add a timer. So you know that if you look at this for the duration, then the object or the teleportation will happen. So then we're going to move on from this. I'm going to add in the motion controllers. I actually have the motion controllers ready and working here. I just couldn't be bothered to set up the Oculus Rift again. Um, and we're going to have full control over like pointing at where you want to go and navigating that way. Okay, so that is what we're going to be making. That's going to be the end goal of this playlist. Hopefully it has your interest peaked. So to begin with, I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this blueprints as we need somewhere to house our blueprints. Inside of this, we want a class and this can just be a standard pawn class because the VR actor is going to be fine as a pawn class. So I'm going to call this BP underscore player base just in case we want different versions of our player. And I'm also going to add a game mode. I like to do this right from the beginning. So I'm just going to create a game mode called BP underscore game mode, just so that we can set the project up. So we don't need to do this every time we come back in to the project. So if we go up to the maps and modes, we can find the game mode. We can give the game mode default game mode class to be the one we've just made and make sure that the default pawn is our player base. That should update in the game mode as well. So we just double check and we can see here that that's updated to the player. And the other thing is I'm just going to go to the editor preferences and I'm going to make sure that all of the windows from now on open in the main window. So that is the project setup. So now when we open something, it should be in this top bar. Okay, so with that done, we go over to the player base class. If you don't already have that open, then open that up and we'll go to the event graph. So I'm just going to remove these because we'll add these in when, as and when we need them. Uh, the first thing, in fact, we do want is the event tick. So we'll just get that back. And from here, we're going to be constantly checking what we are looking at based on the head rotation. We're going to base this off of a camera. So if we start adding the components that we need, the first thing that I want is a scene component. And quite simply, this is going to be called camera root. And this is just because if we need to make any uh, modifications to where the camera is located, the camera in a VR setup is always snapped to the center of the player class, I believe. So you can't directly affect or change that. So if you wanted to change that, we can move the root. So we're going to apply a camera component then onto the root. Now also kind of cheating, but we now have access to the Google VR gaze reticle. So if we just type reticle, uh, in fact, we need to go to the plugins first of all to do that. So we'll go to the plugin options. This just saves up setting up a widget for it. It kind of does this for us. Find the Google VR. So just make sure that you have the Google VR enabled. We need to do that at some point anyway. And if you are going to be working with things like the Daydream, then make sure that you have the motion controller set up as well. Uh, probably won't need that at the moment, but I'm going to add that to the project just in case going forward, just so that I only have to restart this once. With that done, hit restart and we'll be back. Okay, so the project's reloaded with the plugins ready. We can close that window and just go back to the player base. Inside of the player base, we can now add the component. We can search reticle and we can see we've got the Google VR gaze reticle. So if we just add that anywhere, it's just going to be a really simple white square, a circle even. But as I mentioned, when we press play, we should be able to see that in the middle of the screen and it just saves us adding a widget in to do that specifically. We do have some options over here as well. Uh, where you can change the, the distance, the size and everything like that. But I'm going to leave it as default as that has worked perfectly fine in the past. And in the viewport, you can see just here what you'll be changing. That's our reticle. Now, because obviously it's going to be a bit inconvenient uh, working with VR all of the time, always having something connected to move around a VR headset. So what I like to do in my VR projects is I'm going to create some simple desktop debugging input and I'm just going to base that from the mouse. So before we actually get started on the line tracing, we will get the mouse X position. So we can get the mouse X uh, events. And as this is updating, what we want to do from this is add controller your input. 
we want the controller your input we're going to get this uh, we'll multiply this by the delta seconds so float times a float and we'll get the delta seconds and then we're just going to multiply this by a speed so again we'll do float by a float I think I found a value of around about 60 worked quite well here and then we can promote this to a variable and we'll call this the head movement speed okay so we've got the head move speed and then we can plug this into our final value now I'm going to copy and paste this because we're going to need the same thing again but for mouse y so we'll find the mouse y event paste the floats down here and this time we want to add controller pitch so this is going to control the up and down of the head movement so if we hit compile and play that now we should find that if we click in we have control of the player's head based on the mouse that isn't working so i just need to go back and check the maps and modes okay and i think i just forgot to go to the camera we need to by default it won't use any rotation and it's just here so we need to set this to use the control rotation because that's what we're affecting just here uh, now if we go back and play we'll find that as we click in we have control of our mouse and we can see the reticle appearing now on the screen apologies for the frame rate my uh, system seems to be getting a bit hot and uh, I will look into this before recording the next video to see if we can get this to be more stable. But for now, we have our desktop debug setup. So I'm just going to comment this so we know what it is. And this is our editor head movement. And one thing I did notice is that this gives us inverted mouse controls. So just going to quickly come in here as well. And I'm going to multiply this by another float. So float by float. We'll give this a minus one so that we can reinvert this. So that when you move up you look up and vice versa so now if we go back in the x was fine anyway which is side to side but now up is up and down is down okay so that is our editor movement completely done now we want to come back in to the event tick and first of all we want to line trace in a forward direction so we're going to do a line trace by channel and to get the forward direction we're just going to find out where the camera is looking so we'll bring control drag the camera in we're going to get the world location and on top of this we want to also get the world rotation we can then use these we can get the forward vector from the rotation and we'll move that back just multiply this by a distance which can be something very arbitrary uh, may not want it to go too far but we'll do a vector by a float and I'm just going to default fill this with something like 1500 which should be perfectly fine for anything to access within reach and then with this we want to add this so vector plus a vector just change that to be the bottom pin and move this over again we want to add that to the location and then we're going to fill the start point with the location of the camera so that's going to be where the trace start and the end point will be the forward uh, times the distance plus the uh, the world location so that's going to be our, our direction to trace which is going to give us a nice line for the uh, the line trace we can actually go in and test this quickly if you wanted we can plug this in to the line trace set this to draw debug we can do this for duration and then if we play in here we can see where this is drawing is where we are looking again apologies for the frame rate it's never been anywhere near, near this bad before but that gives us an idea of where we're tracing so that's perfectly fine so just turn this back to none just so we don't have that cluttering the screen and what we want to do is actually turn this into a function quickly because we're going to be using this in a few different places so rather than reusing this logic later I'm just going to right click on this and collapse this to our first function so I'm going to call this one line trace forward the only other thing that we want inside of this function is we're going to come back in here I've tidied this up a little bit if you want and we want to do a uh, value returned from the out hit because different functions might use this differently and we want to know if we've hit anything and if we have then what we've hit so we can right click inside of this function now and we can say return this will add a return node for us we can plug this in to the execution pin and we can then plug in the out hit result so this just means that anything that calls this function uh, it's going to make it a slightly more universal we can then return this value and see what we want to do based on the function calling it so that is our trace functionality i'm going to leave that one here for today this sets us up quite nicely to come back in and add in some interactive objects and that will be its own separate topic which makes that a little bit cleaner so that is our line tracing that's going to work for our immediate needs and as i said we're going to come in and add timers and things later as well so i'll leave that video here for today though and just to mention as always as i'm going through this i do have my template project that i'm working from if you're supporting this channel on patreon and for within certain tiers then you will already have access to this project just as a reminder so 
do make sure to check that out. The template project is ready and available and you can download that now and play about this ahead of time before I get the future uploads done. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. As ever, if you'd like to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from any of the playlists on the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.